is EastEnders fans and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week discussing the episodes broadcast between the 10th and the 13th of July 2023. How are you? Are you well? I sincerely hope so. Are you enjoying Wimbledon? Apparently that's going on at the moment, some sort of tennis thing. My mother's there. Just to let you, just for, just for the, the stat fans out there, my mother is currently at Wimbledon. Apparently, it costs ten pounds to buy a glass of pins. There we are. That's the that's the info this week. Uh, joining me, <laughs> joining me as per usual is Re. Hello, Re. How are you? I know, right? I'm shocked. I'm just gobsmacked at ten pounds for one glass of 10 pins. Pounds. Are you joking? Because it's Wimbledon. Yeah. I've... Well, it's probably to start. We are Brits, aren't we? So it's just you know, probably to I... stop Brits getting too carried away. I don't understand Wimbledon. I never have, and I never will. I don't right. get tennis. So I don't it's to do with tennis. Saying. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But I don't <laughs> understand what I don't like. I've tried to watch tennis, and it's legit the most boring thing I've ever seen in my life. I would We're not rather sports people, though. Right? No, but I would rather watch a game of chess than I would tennis. And no exaggeration. Do you know what I think? I would as well, actually. The most exciting thing that I found you can get out of the game of tennis is during the men's mixed doubles. You know those ridiculous noises they make every time they hit the ball? Uh, 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 uh. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes and go to another place. Oh, (laughs) Rob, honestly. Honestly. Sorry. Sorry. Did you hear that Uh, dirty laugh as well that you just did alongside it? I'm like Sid James, mate. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there we are then. So uh, let me tell you now, ladies and gentlemen, this week was a nightmare to make notes mm-hmm. for. A legitimate nightmare. Um, so what that's going to be like to discuss, we shall soon see. In this week's Albert Square After Dark. Right, first cap off the rank, ladies and gentlemen, we shall be discussing the Rocky and Kathy pre-wedding celebrations. Now then, this at first glance, appeared to be all sorts of, you know, sort of typical EastEnders merriment, you know, EastEnders often do these sort of events where the boys will go out and get drunk and the girls will do their thing. However, right at the end of the week, we got quite a significant development in one story, which we should be discussing very shortly. Um, but the, the week basically goes along the lines of uh, Rocky is looking forward to his stag do, Harvey and Mitch... Uh, have really sort of kind of been organising it and sort of keeping him in the dark about what's been going on. Kathy's concerned because she doesn't because knowing Rocky, he'll end up all over social media and trending and get himself cancelled by getting his bits and pieces out online or something. She's legitimately concerned about that. Uh, so she decides to um, tell Bobby to be a spy for the night. Now, I'm not being funny. I think she would have been slightly better off getting Ben to do this. Bobby isn't exactly your typical spy, not exactly well suited to sort of being an undercover agent for anybody. He's a little bit nervous for that sort of thing, I would have thought. Um, And we need to discuss the outfits that they were all wearing because my goodness me. So, (laughs) I mean... They so the basically the idea of the stag is that all of them dress up as one of Rocky's favorite things, and I've written down who uh, who went as what here. Okay, I liked the could, idea. By the way, it was a nice it was a nice idea. idea. Yeah. I might if if I if I ever find myself having a stag night, I think I might I might do it. Which it basically would require a lot of men to be dressed up as EastEnders characters. I think that would basically be. be but yeah, great idea. I, I'm coming though, aren't I? If it's oh, a stag, yeah. like whatever. Oh, oh, oh god, yeah. You may as well. You, you, if, you, you're butcher than me, love. So you may as you may as well. <laughs> you could be. You could be. You could be the stag, and I can be the 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 elm. No. Do you know what? Elm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm over yeah. it. I don't want to come now after that remark. You can nanas. <laughs> you can nanas. I can nanas. I've heard that yeah. one before. Is that a Sheffield thing? Oh, you can nanas. I've never heard that. Anyway, um, you've never heard it. I've never heard that. You can nanas. Oh, you cannot. Never heard that. There we go. Wow. Learn something new every okay. day. Okay, so uh, Rocky uh, dressed as Jimmy White, the snooker player. Now, I was really impressed with myself because I know who Jimmy White is. I was really, I was, I was I know. to ask you that. I know. I was quite impressed with myself. He was on I'm a Celebrity as well, which probably helped. <laughs> Right. That's um, why you're doing. So yeah, Rocky goes as Jimmy White. Freddie is supposed to go as Freddie Mercury, but misreads the card and goes as the Planet Mercury. Which <laughs> I, no, I mean, to be fair, I kind of thought that was quite. I I quite liked Freddie's uh, attempt at going as a planet because he'd stuck like cardboard stars to himself, and it was like something yeah, out of a okay. school nativity. Yeah, it was relatively adorable. Yeah. Um, Mitch goes as Indiana Jones. 
Uh, Harvey goes as Socrates, who apparently is a footballer, but like I would have done, misread, misunderstood that completely yeah. and went as the philosopher. I mean, I, that was uh, yeah. a better mistake than Freddie's Mercury. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, I just, I just love the idea that Freddie read that and thought, "Oh wow, I didn't know that Rocky was into astro- was into astronomy." Uh, fair, he likes the planet Mercury. The, these are the moments when I don't like Freddie, and it's it's. Oh, see, it's weirdly, how he's written. Yeah, see, weirdly, that that moment worked for me this week. I thought that was quite. Oh, I, right, I well, like, there you go. It's weird, know, it's weird, isn't it? But like, mm. I know what you mean in terms of like those sort of thick moments that you sort of think, no, yeah. that's stupid. Come on. But weirdly, I could that see that to me kind of suited Freddie quite well, and I just loved the the image of him sort of walking around like a five year old at, at a Christmas nativity, <laughs> dressed as like a sky, a bit of sky with a star in it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Harvey went to Socrates. Martin went as James Bond. And Alfie went as an actual bottle of beer. And then finally, uh, you've got Bobby, who went as Debbie Harry's. Any idea? Debbie Harry. Rob. Debbie Harry. Not See, Debbie I, Harris. Oh I don't my. know who she is. I don't know who she is. Who is she? I've never heard Are you of her. joking? You don't I've know who Debbie Harry is? I'm Are sorry, you... no. You know I'm not like with uh, music. The lead singer of Blondie? Oh, I didn't know her name, but I just know them as Blondie. <laughs> yeah, she's not called fact, Blondie. The band are called Blondie. The singer's Debbie Harry. In fact, to be perfectly honest with you, I have a feeling that I thought Blondie was just a singer. <laughs> that's what right. I'm saying. No, but it you know, is... like you know, like Pink. Well, that's Debbie Harry, who you think Blondie is. Right. She's okay. the lead singer of Blondie. I mean, she is blonde. If if, if Bobby's out, yeah, she's blonde. Going, yes, yeah. All right, fair enough. He actually looked quite. It were actually a. Was it good? A good attempt. likeness. Yeah, a good yeah. Likeness. Yeah, the, the I mean, clothes in particular, I thought, yeah. I have to say, I didn't know that this was coming, and I happened to see a picture of Bobby dressed up <laughs> on social media, and I thought I was still asleep. <laughs> so I was like, "Why is Bobby in drag?" I, don't, I mean, that's the, that's the uh, the things that Bobby has done to become undercover at, the, at this stag do is is quite spectacular. Oh, it's been genius that this week. I've got to um, say. So the stag, um, they start off in the Vic and all is well. They're sort of getting drunk and everything. And then uh, the boys take Rocky over to the boxing ring where they have actually organised a stripper for him, which was totally against Kathy's orders. Um, Test Tickle. Test Tickle. Did you get it? Did you get it? Test Tickle. Oh, no, I didn't. I've just (laughs) got it then. <laughs> like, yeah, what do you yeah. mean? Yeah. Testicle. Oh. Testicle. Yeah, really? There you go. Naughty East that one, Rob. I mean, she was test. I, I mean, testicle was, uh, I know it's a bit of a Bart Simpson kind of bringing Moses like up at the bar type joke, isn't it? Um, uh, I mean, she had plenty to say, didn't she? She broke, she was the most useless stripper on earth because she stepped out and then immediately kind of slipped over and broke her ankle. So she spent the rest uh, of the prefers, night. She prefers the same exotic dancer. She, she does prefer the same exotic right? dancer. Absolutely right. Uh, but she kind of fell over and then couldn't do a dance. So spent the rest of the evening. Yeah. I, I suspect fully expecting to still get paid, just sitting and, and just enjoying the entertainment. Well, I'm she, not being she funny, but she could have moved top half for herself, couldn't she? I mean, to be do fair, you need all the... She had a bra showing for most of it. She had like oh, a red lace. Worry. She had like a red lace bra on or something. Um, but uh, this this is what I mean when I say that this gets interesting. Rocky's thing because well, for a start, mm-hmm. Rocky has completely messed everything up by the end of this week because um, he is kind of keeping uh, a honeymoon surprise for Kathy, which he has to reveal to her because she's getting annoyed with him. Uh, yeah. But he has organised uh, a Greek honeymoon for Can him I and Kathy. There, though, please. I expect so. Thank you. I actually thought when he was saying that he'd got a cottage in France, it was going to somehow be linked to Ian and Cindy. I wondered that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I and then that. I was like, I was like, oh, what? Are we going to go? Are we going to be EastEnders yeah. on tour with Rocky and Kathy? <laughs> EastEnders on tour? No, yeah. surely not. No, but there. Well, yeah, I thought that all until he revealed it was actually the cruise. Well, even if even if that was the plan, they ain't going now because Rocky well, has Nish turns up at this stag do because Nish is on a liquid lunch. The nice mm-hmm. little moment between Nish and Suki, where Suki is not even pretending not to be disgusted by Nish anymore. <laughs> she and, just, uh, just, just like... utterly despises him. Um, yeah. But Nish decides to follow the boys to the stag do, drunk, and ends up suggesting a poker game. Now, I don't know what it is about poker games on TV shows, but I find them so like absorbing to watch because they normally mean that somebody's about to do something incredibly stupid. Yeah. Like, I remember the last poker game, the big poker game we had, was when Kush and Suki were playing it in Ruby's. And that was gripping. 
I love oh, that. Oh, yeah. Remember? Why is it yeah, with yeah. the Panasars and poker? Love go, yeah, well, I remember at the time Suki saying that the Panasars were well-versed in poker. And it seems that the ah, uh, right, seems that it's true. Seems that it's true because it ends up just being Nish and Rocky playing poker now. Uh, first of all, um, before we get on to what I want to discuss... Um, the game kind of builds up and builds up and builds up until everybody else is out except Nish and Rocky. And because they're both drunk and because they're both trying to win, it gets to that stage where they start giving things outside of money to throw into the pot, including because, yeah. because Rocky's an idiot, uh, the honeymoon that him and Kath were about to go on. Oh, dear, he was convinced dear, he'd won. So now Nish has these tickets in his possession. Now I, I don't think that he, Nish is going to give that back, is he? He's, he's not going to. He's going to want. He's not going to give that back. Suki might make back. him. You reckon? Suki Maybe. might make him and say, "Come on, if you want to look good in the community, it's gesture mm. of goodwill, you should give the tickets back." I, I suspect... can imagine her trying to sweet talk him like that. I mean, I suspect there's well, going to be a lot of drama at this wedding next week, uh, various things considered. So I think this might just be another layer to it. Rocky's in big, big trouble. Uh, yeah, however, I wonder if he will, or is he going to, or is he actually just going to take Suki with him and be like, we're going on cruise? I won't put it past him. Like, Great. Well, yeah, I mean, that would just that would be lovely mm. to Suki. A whole yeah. week's cruise with Nish. <laughs> just Nish. Trapped on a ship with him. She would love that. Uh, but. Another element to this poker match, which is a very, very interesting and came out of nowhere. I was I was not expecting mm. this at all. Um, Nish, at one point, throws a pair of cufflinks into the mix. What do cufflinks mean, Rob? What do you mean, what do cufflinks mean? <laughs> I was trying They're to like, say, why are they relevant? Oh, I see. Like, uh, yeah, because... <laughs> no, I thought you were asking me what do cufflinks mean, as in, like, what is their... Ge- <laughs> like, philosoph- what? A philosophical sense. What do, what do cufflinks mean, Rob? Oh, I was just um, trying to help you build it up anyway. Go oh, on, sorry, so sorry. So. Um, <laughs> I work alone, really. <laughs> Come on, back off, back <laughs> off, man. Um, no, because these are the cufflinks from uh, the Christmas Flash Forward, because they're quite, they've got quite a distinctive design to them, haven't they? They've got a sort of an amber yeah. sort of patterning yeah. to them. Yeah. I think the colour is relevant as well somehow, but I don't. But know. No, I think the colour is just so they're really distinguishable, so that we know that those are the cufflinks okay. we need to keep an eye on. Yeah. Okay. Um, but these cufflinks end up with Jack by the end of the the episode. Now then, now I do not believe that these cufflinks are going to stay with Jack. I think that now we are aware of their presence, we know that they're in the mix. I think mm. these cufflinks are going to do a bit of musical chairs around the men of Wolford as the months go on now, because we're about yeah. halfway through the like the the space between initial flash forward and Christmas Day, so we're officially halfway through the mystery at the moment. And arguably, not that much has really been thrown into the mix in terms of clues. But then you have to sort of say, well, they've still got a lot of time to go, so maybe from now is when the clues will really, really, real, really mm. start building up. Um, but noticeable, I think, for a start, is that those cufflinks belong to Nish. So they've come yes, from Nish. Definitely. Nish could easily get them back. I mean, I can't ima- exactly imagine saying, yeah, you can, have the, uh, you can have the holiday back, but I want my cufflinks back. Cheers. I don't think it's going to work out like quite like that. Well, but, presumably they're expensive cufflinks. I mean, you well think? Is that to use them as some kind of, uh, yeah, you know, a leverage in a poker game? Yeah. And Nish is going to wear like. Money. That's the yeah. word. And Nish isn't exactly going to wear costume jewellery, is he? Like, he's going to be, like, yeah. wanting to flash around his, his posh cufflinks. Mm. Um, so, Jack, what do you think? I mean, is Jack a contender for being on the floor Christmas Day? No, but they're obviously wanting us to think so at this stage, for some reason. I, feel, I, <sighs> I mean, he has been. Nah. I mean, no, I mean, I don't, I don't believe he... I don't believe Jack's going to die on Christmas Day for a second. But, you know, maybe we are supposed to sort of be looking at Jack's sort of behaviour of late. He's been a bit of an arsehole to Denise. He's kind of, he's that sort of character. He's a, you know, a bit of a, a dodgy one at times. True. So maybe, maybe we should be thinking who could Jack potentially pass these cufflinks give on them to, to. Or yeah. lend them to, yeah. or for what reason. I mean, there's a lot of weddings going on. Yes, there are. Thing. There's at least two. So. Yeah. Uh, there's another wedding going on that uh, decided that they it was going to be put on a different date to uh, the, the date that we know a wedding occurs on. Because uh, Sharon and Keanu uh, set their date for, I think it was October the 14th. Which is nowhere near Christmas Day. Yes, so presumably, it was. Yeah, so presumably yeah. that I, I didn't remember because it's ten days before my birthday. Um, yeah. So presumably that's changing because Sharon is in a wedding dress Christmas Day. So she's e- either the oh, date yeah, of the wedding is changing so or the groom happen? is changing. Yeah, either the date of the wedding is changing or the groom is changing. One of those things is about is is not as mm. it currently is. Um, but I can't imagine these cufflinks ending back in Nish. 
see, to me at this stage, I still am quite convinced that it's Nish on the floor Christmas Day just because of the type of character he is. He's got that sort of archy build up where they're going to want to kill him off in big spectacular fashion. And he can become so much worse from here on in, I think. Especially Nasuki is just so utterly repulsed by him. <laughs> just doesn't hide it. Um, so I, def- I, I still think it's, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. it's still Nish as well, to be honest. But then how, I mean, this is going to be interesting, interesting sort of what yeah. Cufflink watch over the next few months, because these Cufflinks presumably are mm-hmm. going to sort of go around the square. For whatever reason, like, why mm. would a pair of Cufflinks, like, just do the rounds around Albert Square? It's going to be interesting mm. to sort of see. Hashtag Cufflink watch, I want starting on Twitter. Um, well, it's making me it's making me think, last week we were pondering, could it be Theo who's dead on floor? I don't see how he'd end up in possession of these Cufflinks. No, very true. Very, very true. Unless, you know... Although he does like to take trophies and stuff. He's already took Stacey's perfume. Oh, Do they end it, up with Martin somehow? Mail with Martin and then he know? takes them. Yeah, yes, yes. Mm. I mean, throw your theories in the comments section, ladies and gentlemen, because this mystery is officially, officially begun now. It's just getting exciting. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, <clears throat> with uh, Meanwhile, aside from all of that madness going on in the boxing ring, the hen party is going on. Uh, and hey. interestingly, Elaine and Kathy, <laughs> like Kathy drunk again. I adore drunk Kathy. Drunk Kathy is the best character created in fiction. I love her. Um, and I was quite pleased to see that uh, Gina <clears throat> recognised uh, Kathy's eternal youth and said that she looks 30. She's absolutely right. Yes. Yep, she was correct. Um, and I loved Kathy and Elaine's drunken snog. I thought that was quite fun. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. The party, the party itself, the head party itself looked quite good crack. I, I was quite, I was quite enjoying that. And I tell you what, say what you like about Ballum, but those boys can carry a harmony. I thought, I thought they did their. Uh, oh sugar- yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Sugar Base? They were girls singing. Allowed. The- oh, girls, girls allowed. allowed. I'm so rubbish with music. I'm so rubbish with music. It's like I'm I didn't want to say, but. Uh, yeah, of course you didn't. Of course you didn't. You love telling me how rubbish my <laughs> music is. Um, <clears throat> but uh, obviously, sort of, Kathy and Elaine are sort of clashing a little bit this week with Elaine sort of making insensitive comments about yeah. like, Kathy's wedding like history. Um, but by the end, they're sort of, you know, they sort of kind of put it to bed and they're quite good mates, which is an interesting place for their characters to be at this stage, isn't it? I agree. And it's making me warm to Elaine more now. Good, 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 good. I've that's, got to admit, that's, that's nice to know. seeing how Kathy have... is. Yeah, mm. I enjoyed I enjoyed Elaine this week to be honest. But yeah, I did. Kathy and Elaine being friends is interesting at this point. Bearing in mind we know who is returning because you know you've got oh, Kathy yeah. and Not yeah, Kathy, yeah. Kathy and Kathy and Cindy's long tumultuous mm. history, and this new history is about to be created between uh, Elaine versus Cindy. So Kathy and Elaine together are going to be an interesting combo, and it mm. does maybe sort of put. George in line for Christmas Day as well. You know, the fact that he's in the Vic, he's got this kind of common enemy for them both, one of them being one of the six kind of coming in. Oh, uh, it's getting to the stage where I'm gonna need I'm gonna start needing like a massive chart to to follow all this, to follow all these kind of different clues and relationships that are happening. It's getting very, very exciting. Maybe um, we should. Yeah, maybe we should. I think it's gonna take a while for us to create it at this point, I think. Um, I mean, so where where are you with the mystery at this point? Bearing in mind what we know so far, like do you have any kind of solid theories at the moment about you know where people are gonna be, where 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 we're heading? What do you think? Oh, uh, the only thing is Nish. She's the only mm. one that seems it's go it's gonna be Nish. But then yeah, it could be George. I don't know, Rob. This is the problem. I know. It's so I know. hard. It's... And then like I said, Theo. I would have a minute with Theo last week because there'd be ammunition and if Yeah. Well, we'll get on to it, but obviously Stacey and Martin, you know, that might mm. be Jealousy. So maybe ammunition there or Prime of Passion. I yeah, I know, I know. Um <gasps> I've just got, I've... Oh, I've just go got on. someone else. Go on. Ricky Jr. Why would it be Ricky Jr.? Because Jack might give him cufflinks. I'm just trying to think who <laughs> Jack could give cufflinks to. Yeah, I have these, I have these cufflinks I've got from the local gangster. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. <laughs> Rose and Lily with them on, it'll be fine. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never, never know. Um, so, yeah, much more to come with that, I think. Um, but the immediate future uh, with this wedding next week, uh, I do. Do you think that we're going to. Do you think the wedding will go ahead? Yeah, I think it's going to go ahead. There's going to be some drama. I just can't figure what it's going to be. Is it going to be 
Ben, because Ben's been very good this week, hasn't he, so far? Uh, ben was, ben was too very, very, well. Uh, ben was far too well behaved this week. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't and he was try. too happy, so it were almost like he's masking. Well, he was happy, but he, he, was also, he was also a bit drunk throughout the week, which can, uh, can, tends to send Ben in one of two directions. Either Ben can quite yeah. enjoy himself when he's drunk or he turns into an utter nightmare. Uh, sort so of maybe that's what we'll nightmare. get next week, then. Um, yeah, but also there was a little moment blinking you miss it type thing with the eating disorder at the Hendu this week, which I didn't what, which I didn't, uh, which I didn't hit on until I did my second uh, viewing of the episode. Uh, Callum sort of tried to uh, hand feed him some food this week, and he sort of batted his hand away and just kind of shook his head. So it's still there, <clears throat> it's still there, very much in the midst mm. of Ben's mind. So we've got, we've got, we have got all that to come. I don't know whether that will come. To the forefront next week. I think there's going to be enough going well, on. The only, but... the only other thing I can think of is is Rocky's ex missus going to turn up I wanting suspect... more money because she did I... say, "Oh, mm. there's there's loads more where that came from." Yes. That's like the last we saw of her. I wouldn't be surprised. Somehow bribe him somehow. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe makes an appearance next week. To be honest. But mm, mixed blackmail. in with the fact, yes, but obviously mixed in with the fact that Kathy wanted Ian and Peter at this wedding. Are we? I think next week might be at least when one of them makes a reappearance. It'd Maybe Peter. Peter. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, you think Peter next week? I mean, I don't know. I I have no yeah. idea. But no, it, same. No idea. Although having Cin- be being kind of reacquainted with Cindy on a wedding day, that would be good. That would be quite exciting and dramatic. It would, but it doesn't seem likely now, does it? It doesn't seem like I don't it's going to be this soon. I don't know. Well, I don't know, because obviously <clears throat> Ian's uh, Ian's only interest at the moment is to be keeping Cindy away from Albert Square, considering who he mm. now knows is living in the Vic. So I can sort of imagine maybe Ian wanting to come back for your, his mum's wedding and telling Cindy, no, 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 you stay here, love. You stay here. You stay here. And Cindy going, uh, why? And then following him to a back to Albert Square mm. and sort of discovering everything. I think next week might be a big week. I'm getting vibes. I think it's going oh, to be a very, very big. Yeah, I th- I've got a feeling next week's going to be quite maybe, a big week. Maybe they are back then. Maybe. I would. Th- I, I'd, I'd put money on Peter. Although, why did he text Bobby saying, I'll not be there for wedding? I've got stuff mm. going on. Why did we see mm. that message then? Watch this space. Watch this space. I'm excited. Marvellous. Throw your comments in the uh, comment section below, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know where you think everything in this storyline is going. Uh, next up is Kim. <laughs> Kim has been freed, ladies and gentlemen. She is out of prison and her hair has resumed to its normal service. Bless her. Bless Kim in prison. Broken shell of a woman with her hair all floppy. It didn't suit her at all, did it? It's sad to see. No. Uh, but inside, she is still feeling just as fragile. No amount of hairspray can fix how she is feeling uh, with her anxiety. Uh, and so she's released from prison. Uh, she clutching a letter from the prison psychologist. Now, you will remember all of these mad theories that we had about what exactly was going on with Kim. We were talking about things like Munchausen syndrome and sort of all of the sort of... Me, me. Uh, <laughs> you agreed. You nodded and went, yeah, that sounds interesting, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, potentially, I guess, yeah. Maybe it was it was too early in our podcasting history for you to disagree with me at that point, was it? Yeah, it was. It <laughs> yeah, was. now yeah. you'd be like, don't be stupid, Rob. You're talking absolute garbage, as yeah. usual. Um, but yeah, she has been officially diagnosed with PTSD. Um, now, I, I, I mean, I, this, this is all great for Kim in terms of character, and it's really interesting direction to take her. Uh, my only thing with this is, of all the mad, traumatic things that have happened in Albert Square over the years, that little crash where she kind of gently bumped into the Archie party. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough to trigger PTSD, but all the other well, mad it wasn't stuff that gently, ever... Rob. You know, the old scaffolding came down and nearly killed Denzel. If uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I know it, I know. anything. I know, what you're it, I know, but it's, it's just amuses me that that of was all enough. the things yeah, of all the true. things for us to, to just have a PTSD storyline. Mm. This is the one. <laughs> it just amuses me. Um, but it's interesting now because we started discussing uh, over the past couple of weeks about the waiting on like lists and how long you've got to wait for consultations and all that kind of thing. And that was really nicely covered, I thought, in that scene between Kim and Sonia. Uh, yeah, that was where, a good analogy that Sonia yeah, gave where she was explaining really nice, the yeah. Um, EMDR. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 
How and also, in your brain, the trauma. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jeff. <laughs> so I, I think Jeff. It's, it's a quite Jeff. nice sort of kind of coin term for Kim to use for it. I like that. And apparently that can be really helpful in that situation to sort of just be able to sort of reel it off naturally. Just go, oh, it's Jeff. I need, to, mm. I need to do Jeff. I need to speak to Jeff. And it sort of, it can sort you out like that. It's interesting because I've done um, cognitive behavioral therapy when I had anxiety quite badly a few yeah. years ago. And it does really help in some respects. Um, but it, and it was interesting to sort of hear Sonia say quite openly, yeah, you're going to be on a waiting list for about two years. Yeah, you, you're at the front of a queue, but there are many, many queues. It was quite a frank sort mm-hmm. of honest discussion about it, um, which was interesting. Um, but at the moment, um, the wait isn't going to be so much a part of the storyline because no. obviously Denise gave Howie some money last week and Howie is going to be using that for a private consultation for Kim. Now, again, like you mentioned last week, that's going to maybe get her one consultation. And then what? Does she go then? Does she then go back on the waiting list? Or do you reckon that covers her for like, well, it depends the rest because of it depends what consultation she's having and what therapy or treatment mm. because maybe it, maybe it will be more than one. Maybe there are a hundred quid a session. And then no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't but know. I wonder if, I wonder if the way they're going to get around having to sort of not do a two year lot waiting for Kim yeah, is the fact is that. This in terms of using Sonia's analogy about queues is that the, how his money is going to get her to the front of all the queues. And that's literally just going to be Kim in sessions from here on in. I don't know. It seems like that, doesn't it? Because they yeah. said, oh, she's got a little weight because they're trying to show that she's got somebody who's semi-decent as how mm. said, you know, if you had, if you were going there straight away, then you'd think there was something wrong, wouldn't you? Because why yeah. have you got any customers and all that? So I think that I reckon it next two weeks, she'll be seeing yeah. this private yeah. person and, I mean, it's like I've said, I get it. I do get it, you know, and I know it's a kind of tricky thing for a soap to sort of say, well, how long can we realistically mm. do this for? But it's sort of, it, it does take away from like, it's, and it's nice to bring up the weight and it's nice to sort of mention the fact that people who are in this situation normally have to wait a hell of a long time before mm. anything kind of helpful can come their way. Um, but it's, I would like to sort of see that represented more on screen. Um, I don't want to put too sort of like much of a downer on it because we don't know that, whether, like, like we just said, we don't yeah, know whether don't know. it is going sure. to go in that mm. direction or whether this one sort of consultation will, and then Kim goes back on a list waiting for the next one. Um, but she'll have to wait and see. Um, but she's in dire need of it because she attempts a shift at the Albert uh, and she can't even open up. So she kind of hides kind of behind oh, the yeah. bar. Howie finds her freaking out, freaking out upstairs. And kind of gives Howie a nice moment this week, which Howie is, I think, I mean, Howie's okay in terms of, like, as a character, but he's very much sort of Kim's boyfriend at the moment rather than anything Yeah, having anything distinct. himself going on. Yeah, and I feel like Howie kind mm. of needs that. Um, but this is maybe a sort of nice sort of stepping stone for him to be going off in his own direction in terms of storylines um, with him being there for Kim and the really nice conversation they had upstairs at the Albert where sort of Kim was talking about how she was feeling and how he was genuinely sat there listening and taking it all in and going, right, OK, so I'll be there for you. We'll do what we can. This is I've got some money for. But then he she he um, how he didn't tell Kim that where this money came from. So I wonder yeah, if that's going to be a that. yeah. So I mm. wonder if that's going to be a bone of contention between Kim and Denise. Maybe I don't know. I mean, is there anything to be angry at Denise about on Kim's part? You think? I don't know really. I know what you're saying. Why? Why was it that Denise said to Howie that? Like, oh, just make up. Because remember when Denise gave it to Howie last week? She said, "Yeah, oh, make up that it came from an aunt or something." Why were it that she said, "Oh, don't tell Kim it came yeah, from?" Yeah, I mean, I think it's more to do with Kim's sort of pride in the matter and sort of Kim. You think? Uh, yeah, mm. I think it's more to do with Kim as a person rather than their relationship. I think it's yeah. like just you can sort you can sort of imagine Kim being the sort of person that would just not want any sort of charity in this in this type yeah, of scenario possibly. whatsoever. So mm. I think maybe it's that, and sort of Denise can sort of step aside and allow Kim the yeah. help, and and Kim can feel as though she's done it herself rather than feeling like yeah. her family is giving her handouts. Which I don't know, maybe yeah. that will cause problems further down the line. Um, but yeah, maybe a, a long journey to go for Kim in terms of how, in terms of her recovery process. Um, so we'll have to kind of wait and see how she was, that goes. She was. Do you remember well, when uh, Micah ran off in the middle of, in the, he was just in the house? Yeah. Like, he didn't run off anywhere. That were a bit intense, weren't it? Well, this is where she's at. You know, she's, yeah. I, think, I think it's the kind of, the thing with it being Denzel is kind of put us, make, made her scared of uh, kind of uh, problems with the kids and like putting their safety mm. at risk. So, Mika kind of not being is it Micah or Mika? Is it, they say I'm Micah. I'm sure she lot, said Micah. I think yeah. they said Micah. Yeah, I think they I always think of the Micah. singer. <laughs> I always think of the singer. Yeah, Mika. Mika. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but you know, kind of Micah running off is was enough to sort of trigger her into thinking, oh my god, where's, yeah. he, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Mm. He's in danger, he's in danger. So it's interesting. And I really hope that when we get these sessions, that we're we are in the sessions with Kim and we sort of see yeah. somebody working through it. That would be interesting if we're yeah, going it to would. if we're not going to I mean, sort if they're gonna the yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was just gonna say. Yeah. Although I think that they could have still done it a bit differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, assuming that she is going to be getting this private help in the next month. Yeah. But they could have at least they could have at least shown her shown her waiting for six months or something, and then gone right now. It's got to a point where she really needs it, so we're going to have to yeah. go private. So they could show that impact a little bit more because mm. most people do have to wait because going private isn't an option for most of the public, is it? Exactly. So, and that weight yeah. can then have a further impact on their mental health. Yeah, and it could show that Howie, it could give Howie something to do. Yeah. He could start over, like, working overtime, getting two jobs to try and get the money to pay for it or mm. something. I don't know, it might be a bit of a missed opportunity anyway. Yeah, I mean... It that quickly. Don't get me wrong, I would never have expected them to keep this going for two years. For two years, I wouldn't expect that for a second, but I don't know whether it it is that kind of fine balancing act, the Mm. fact that they need to keep the story going rather than sort of focus. But, you know, but then it might have been, like you say, it might have been interesting to sort of kind of see Kim getting worse and worse or like Mm. watching to see whether the weight has a massive impact on her and how her family kind of copes or with helps her deal with it. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see where it goes because there there could still be a a few directions this goes in. So we shall have to wait and see. Right, ladies and gentlemen, next story on the agenda is Stacey and Theo. (laughs) Stacey and Martin sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Or so we hope. Uh, Jean has decided that Theo and Stacey, however, are absolutely made for each other. Their sexual chemistry cannot be beaten mm-hmm. in the mind of Jean. Bless her. <laughs> yeah. Bless her cottons. Um, so after uh, Theo arrives at the Slater house to give Lily her tutoring, Jean uh, decides to uh, set them up on a date and basically just does it just doesn't let Stacey say a word. <laughs> Just sort of goes, Stacey really wants to take you for lunch, and you'd love that, wouldn't you, Theo? Theo's like, yeah, 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 I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, why were we? Why were we just stood at the door? By the way, we were actually stood here again. Probably, first. probably. You know, Stacey opened door. I'm I like, mean, oh, and he's like, oh. I mean, let's talk about. Oh, this were for a he second, because, going back? I mean, who knows? I mean, it's possible that he was, but at the same time, this is a man who. I, like knew full well what Stacey was doing upstairs and said, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and work while you're on your phone oh my someone God. from Australia. That was so, so creepy. Oh so my creepy. God. Um and he's literally kind of sat there at her kitchen table, like being Edmund, while she's busy talking to him upstairs. So weird, so warped. Does Love he it. not does he not <laughs> like, you know, it's not part of it that well, he's sitting yeah. and doing stuff. I mean I, we're I doing mean, it under we're doing it under a kitchen table. Is that what we're thing? And Lily was in the house as well. Oh, I, I heaven know. forbid. I know, but this is you know, and also the guy that he. I don't know, but we'll talk about it. So they end <laughs> up going. We end up going on this date, right? And um, oh, there yes. was uh, just before we get to the actual date. Brilliant little bit of jibe in between Suki and Stacey. Loved that. Absolutely adored that. Oh yeah. That. Now, what were you going to say? You look like you were about to highlight something different. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I thought you were talking about um, when Stacey were putting her makeup on in the Baps van and Eve were winding Martin up, going, oh, oh like yes. you're jelly. I thought you were on about that. Oh, right. Well, yes. So at oh, the I same, thought you were going to talk about well, that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But I just wanted to highlight the Suki and Stacey thing because I thought yeah, it was that very, was very good, funny. Actually. Marvellous banter between the two of them there. Like Stacey's announcing that she's here for a date and, and Suki genuinely surprised when she turned around and saw that somebody with a book was wanting to go out with Stacey. Like, he can read. Don't be ridiculous. That can't be your yeah. date. <laughs> Marvellous. I love it. Um, but it's interesting with Suki and Stacey because, you know, at the, at the lock-in, like Stacey, I mean, I know Stacey was pissed, so maybe she was <laughs> sort of at that stage where, where we all are when we're, when we're drunk. You know, we'll talk to anybody, and everyone's our best friend. Mm. But these, but Stacey and Suki genuinely do not get on. Like Suki does not like Suki at all. So it's sort of interesting to sort of I'd li- I like Suki doesn't this, like Stacey. Well, neither of them like each other is what I'm is what I mean. So it's kind of interesting to sort of because of Eve and Stacey's relationship, which by the way is one of the best in the soap at the moment. I love Stacey and Eve. I it's wanted fantastic. to comment on that actually. I really, yeah. really like Stacey they are and Eve's relationship. Such a good this pairing. Is- yeah. They really are. They are. I love agree. It. I love it. Um, but the date itself, right? Um, it's awkward. It's awkward. It's cringy. It's it's just uncomfortable to watch. 
Um, at one point, Stacey genuinely just turns around to him and goes, you're not like just tutoring Lily so you can get to me, are you? And the audience is going, uh, yes, that's exactly what and he's goes, doing. Yes. Uh, I just need to go to the toilet. Yeah, and then disappears for half an hour. By the time he gets back, Stacey's halfway through a glass of wine. How long was he in there for? What was he doing? He was like, oh, what do I say? What excuse yeah. do I think of, like, coming up with his lines or something? What was he doing? Imagine if, imagine if someone jetted like that when you were on a first date. <laughs> like, 15 <laughs> minutes, went to the toilet. You'd be like, oh. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's, that's, I'll see. I'll call you. Yeah, <laughs> call me. Um, but yeah, Stacy is just unimpressed by him whatsoever. Like she likes him as a person, and she's kind of really grateful for what he's doing for Lily. But in terms of sexual chemistry, for Stacy, there is zero. In her mind, yeah. she genuinely has more sexual chemistry with Edmund than she does with Theo, which is slightly concerning. Seen as though she's never actually seen Edmund. That's how flat her date is. Yeah. Um, but what I loved was the fact that um, after the date. Uh, Theo sends Stacy a text message. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed myself today. Love to see you again. All Stacy does is return like a, a thumbs up emoji, thumbs up. which is the worst message to receive in any scenario. All right, like if someone sends you that after a date, it's not gone well. All right, yeah, everyone knows that. Theo, no, he, Theo is absolutely delighted with that. <laughs> like just any communication, and then he sat outside her house watching her from the bedroom while she's cooking. Curtains. Yeah, well, I mean, he, presumably he's got like screen grabs on his phone. So while he's talking to, when he's talking to Stacy, he's presumably just taking constant screen grabs that he can just stare at and flick through at all times. Very strange man. Very strange man. Dangerous Ooh. man. Yeah, yeah. Dangerous. and also before that, when he was, you know, he dropped Stacey off on the doorstep and he gave her a kiss on the cheek. Oh. Even Stacey, even Stacey looked like flinched. she felt creeped out by she that, flinched. didn't she? she even yeah. Be like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. if only she knew. Oh, if only she knew. But how long is it before she does know? Do you think? Like, how much longer can Theo keep this a secret? He's getting a bit brazen about it, isn't he? You know, sitting yeah. at the dining table like yeah. he did and yeah. going I mean, that... through his phone while sat outside out. So yeah. is it going to yeah. be a matter of time before someone just happens to see what he's doing? Yeah, he is getting brazen. Um, I mean, it's um, the perfume Stacy sort of explained away thinking that Lily had just taken it. So he's got oh, away. Yeah, yeah. So I did he's wonder got away if she'd think that. that. Yeah. One so of kids, I thought she was going to say. Yeah, it, it, it provided actually the perfume provided a nice little another little jibe at uh, Suki when she was sitting down. <laughs> like so he, he, he was like, oh, "New perfume, new perfume, you got a new perfume," and she was like, "No, I lost mine. It's Eve's." <laughs> it's just at Suki. Oh yeah, enjoyed. yeah, yeah. Do you uh, like it? Yeah, do you like that? It's Eve Suki. Do you like it? It's, well, love it. It's great. Um, so yeah. So in the meantime, uh. Be- mainly because Stacey is completely distracted in terms of relationships and sexuality uh, because she has a very erotic dream about Martin. Uh, uh, frankly, I don't blame him. Erotic dreams. <laughs> I had one about Anton Deck once, just so you know. Yeah, I know. I know. You cannot control who you have sexual dreams over. Both of them? Yeah. yeah. At the same time? Put it like this. Well, don't go into too many details. I won't go into too, right? go into too much details, but put it like this. <laughs> I was the and. <laughs> You were the ant. Yeah. No, I was the and. You know, when ant and deck, I was the. Mm. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Right. There you go. <laughs> As if. Oh, my God. Gone red. Oh, dear. Um, right. So, it's hot. I'm not blushing. It's just hot. It's hot. It's hot. You have uh, actually right. gone red. I've actually gone you, red. You me? shared it. Oh, you have shared it. I know. I've, this is what comes from wearing your heart on your sleeve in front of a microphone. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Anyway, um, but it shows that you can't control who you have uh, sexual dreams over. Because Eve was busy detailing that she had a sex dream about shrimpy one time. Eve said, "Oh yeah." I, I was surprised at that at first. I was kind of like... Did she say he left his hat on as well? Uh, yeah, she he left his hat on, which, in all honesty, I'm pleased about. It feels like Shrimpy wouldn't take his hat off. You know, yeah, that's true, Shrimpy actually. has that hat on at all times. It feel, And mm. I feel like this is all... Even though it was a dream, it feels like this was almost confirmation that Shrimpy would keep his hat on, which I was yeah, quite pleased about. I agree. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so Stacey has this dream about Martin. And Martin, when he finds out about the date with Theo, kind of sidles over to the bat van. Uh, unbeknown, un- not knowing that Stacey's kind of hiding underneath doing her makeup ready for the date. He's talking to Eve about it and saying how he's je- how he's worried and sort of concerned about Theo. And Eve just reads him like a book, goes, yeah, you're jealous, are you? You're jealous. Uh, which Stacey obviously overhears the whole thing. So... Oh, also, he was he was genuinely concerned as well. I don't think he oh, was yeah. all pure jealousy. Yeah, and, but he... she were trying to make out, oh, you're just jealous. It's like, yeah, no, 
he has got an actual bad vibe about Thea yeah. that is correct. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, it's and by the end of the week, uh, because obviously Eve and Stacey both go to the Hindu and Stacey. Oh, I loved them together up. getting drunk. I want to see more even uh, yeah, more Stacey even Stacey getting, getting, drunk, getting drunk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It sort of reminds me in a way of the way that Stacey and Kat used to get drunk together. Like sort of yeah, like yeah, Stacy. Stacy works really nicely when she's got a girl mate to get drunk with, and he fills in that yeah. role nicely. It's lovely because um, Stacy and Cat don't have that many scenes anymore, which is a shame. Um, so oh, I, she's I a Mitchell scene. now, isn't she? Cat? She's a Mitchell now, enough. not yet. I do wonder if I do wonder okay. if Cat's ever going to be a Mitchell. I do wonder. I do wonder. Um, yes, and while they're getting rid of the Hindu, and while they're at the Hindu, and Stacy's a bit drunk, she's trying to flirt with Martin, and Martin, I think, is trying to keep her at arms at arms bay a little bit. Like, isn't doesn't like, really want to make his move. Arms length, arms bay, keep her at bay, keep her bay. at bay, arms, keep her at bay, and arms, arms length. length. Right, yeah, there we go. There we go. That's <laughs> what my head was doing. <laughs> That's what I always do. That's Still thinking was. about Ant and Decker, aren't you? Yeah, oh, little <laughs> N. That was me. <laughs> uh, that's one hell of a bush took a trial I had that night. Um, um, <laughs> um, but uh, Stacey later, drunkenly mind, which I think might come into play because she's going to forget that yeah. she's done this, um, asks Martin to be her date for the wedding, her plus one. And apparently Martin has said yes. So now Stacey's going to turn up at this wedding with Theo and Martin, both expecting to be there as her date, isn't she? Which is going to be Well, I don't think she's going to forget about Martin, but I think it's going to be that she's forgotten to tell Theo again. And then she's like, oh, I've got two dates. I could have just took Theo mm. to the wedding and then let him down gently or something. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, is there anything worse than getting dumped at somebody else's wedding? Like, well, that's, that's... maybe after, maybe after. Maybe after. Although, can I say something though? Right? Yes. I don't know. I keep asking permission. No, but... I don't. Given this impression <laughs> don't you... that I don't give you permission to speak, unless <laughs> permission to speak, Rob. Permission to speak. It's not how it is, viewers. Um, listeners. No matter what she tries to you... tell you. Mm. Don't you think it was quite irresponsible of Stacey? Not irresponsible, but what's the word? I don't know. I don't this, know. Is I don't I don't like... it... this is why I don't let you speak. I can't think the words. It's mum brain. It's mum brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you think it were a good idea to go out with her child's tutor when she really needs a child to be having this tutor in at the minute? Like, yeah, did, yeah. didn't Stacey think maybe that's crossing the boundary? Yeah, sighted, I think is a good then, word for that. Because yeah, then, yeah, obviously, if, yeah, it yeah. Does, if it does good tits up, then yeah. Yeah, then that's, not Liddy's, got for your that's Liddy's tutoring Scrooge. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right there. Which yeah. may be half of where she's kind of going in her brain. Of, no, this really wasn't a great idea. I don't fancy you. And you talk about things like Shakespeare when I'm trying to yeah. like talk about chips. You know, yeah. <laughs> like it's they have nothing. They have absolutely nothing in common. No. And I love that Gene looks at Theo and thinks that he is the perfect man for Stacey oh, because Stacey. like it's <laughs> it's just perfect do you know what Jean reminds me of someone that we know that <laughs> like someone I used to live with uh Jean reminds me totally of do you know what I mean now don't you yeah, yeah I, I, see don't wanna, totally. I don't want to say a name I don't want to say a name on the podcast but trust me it ain't far away um so yeah there we go I think the problems for Stacey next week are going to be at the wedding I think Theo is not going to react well to seeing Martin there I think it's all going to get very awkward next week mm. and maybe Theo might step up his game a little bit yes worrying worrying for Stacey she is in danger uh right mm. final story of the week ladies and gentlemen Lisa has returned So we open Monday's episode with a taxi arriving on the square and who should step out but Lisa Fowler and Peggy, not Barbara Wins Peggy, but little little girl Peggy. Uh, and they immediately have to run away from the taxi driver because Lisa's got no money. And I wonder why that would be. Um, pleased to see Lisa back. What are your thoughts on Lisa? Indifferent, to be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I... Well, I've got more thoughts, but it'll make more sense as this conversation okay. progresses, I guess. I mean, it's, I always think that it's nice to sort of see these classic characters, especially they've been around for, yeah. since like the earliest days. I think I want to say that Lisa started in the 90s, but she might have been early noughties. But around that sort of era, it's always no, nice to sort of see the someone. 90s, who's, I think. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Quite, uh, yeah. The, I mean, the Who Shot Phil thing was 2001. So maybe she was around a couple of years. Before. I was there yeah. earlier for some reason in my uh, head. 2000, oh, okay. 2001. But then All to right. be fair, Re, it's very easy to remember that 2001 was like 20 years ago. <laughs> so it's, it's you have to kind of and remind some. yourself. 
yeah and then some, you have to remind yourself of that sometimes don't you um wow. but lisa is uh, lisa is looking for keanu uh and keanu meanwhile is blissfully unaware that his uh, horrific mother-in-law has arrived back on the square because he's busy sorting out sharon's dream venue now this was this first opening scene with sharon and keanu was point number one as why i do not think that this wedding is going to go ahead Just despite what we know is happening on christmas day i'm well, for a start, they're talking about October the 14th being their wedding. So at the very least, this wedding is getting delayed somewhat until until happily Christmas. Um, because Keanu has said to Sharon, right, yeah, I've booked you your dream venue. Your dream venue that you've been telling me about, we've got it. We've got it. All I need is for you to now give me £5,000 for the deposit. And Sharon's like, uh. So it didn't really, you haven't really got it. I'm paying for it. So there is automatically this, this straight away, there's, these, there's this sense that Keanu and Sharon are sort of like a loggerheads with money and it's just not going to work. Well, what was she expecting? She knows he hasn't got money. She wants this dream wedding venue. What? Where did she think it was going to come from? To That's very fair? true. Like, he's going to need to borrow it from her, isn't he? He's not got any yeah. money. Do you think that Sharon has somewhat romanticised the idea of Keanu in her head, whereas not really thinking about the reality of going with somebody that is Keanu's age? Well, they've rushed into it, haven't they? Let's be honest. He's not been back for two minutes and they're already engaged after yeah. it didn't work out before. Uh, and he's not been in his son's life for, what, three years, were it? Mm. Until he's come yeah. back? Yeah. So... Yeah, she yeah, possibly. But you were saying that, you know, they set the date for October 14th. Well, mm. we've already seen that she's not got the stream wedding venue. So could then they could they then say, well, that's why it's Christmas Day? Maybe. And maybe it might be that simple, actually. Yeah, you you're quite mm. right. Um, but mm, I don't know. I don't know. I just said I just get the sense. Well, I mean, as the week goes on more and more, you just sort of think you two are so not sushi in the long run. Like, mm. yes, kind of crazy, mad, sexy love affair that you had when she was with Phil. I can totally see because, you know, Keanu is a fit, buff, sexy guy that Sharon, like anybody would All like, right, would, would go mad over. Oh, you know what I mean, though? Like, he's, yeah, you know, yeah, muscly <laughs> and looks yeah. amazing in a vest. But in terms of a long term relationship with uh, kind of with someone like Sharon, with someone like Keanu, is that going to work? I, I, I'm kind of seeing that it's not going to work. And I, and I actually think that they do have potential if only just communicate with her and be. Honest. Oh, I mean, this is the main kind of oh, crux of Keanu. Oh, it, it, tell me about it. So Sonia sees Lisa and she's like, oh, Lisa, yeah, great to see you. Come around for a cup of tea and you don't look great. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And we discover apparently from Lisa, and I use the word apparently because I'm not sure that I believe any of this that came out of mouth because con like considering what we discover later it's on in Lisa, the week. Isn't it? And it's Lisa. Um, apparently, Louise has completely and utterly gone off the rails. She is drinking, she's on drugs, and Lisa claims that she has now had to become Peggy's legal guardian. Mm. Now, you can maybe sort of see that. You know, there is a sort of believable segment to think, yeah, I can maybe imagine Louise doing that. But as we discover later on in the week, Lisa is hiding a massive secret herself because Lisa has become addicted to gambling. Um, and she's got like apps on her phone and she's constantly on it, like throughout the whole week. Like there was a scene when she went to uh, see Phil and Kat and she went, oh, I just need to use the loo. And all she wanted to do was go outside on, in the corridor and, sit and play on her phone to do the gambling thing. So she has really got an issue here. I did think that, by the way, because Kat went out to talk to her. I'm like, why are right, you in the toilet? I'm going to say, why are you in the toilet? <laughs> yeah. Like, stood in here. I think Kat had yeah, knew that something was going on, well, didn't she? Yeah. Um, so... I mean, th this whole thing, with everything that went on this week, this story was why it was so difficult for me to make notes this week, because there was just so much of it involving yeah. quite a large group of characters, mm. considering it was basically one story. Um, you talk about, you know, the Keanu and Sharon thing. Um, Lisa is basically holding Peggy to ransom so that Keanu can see Peggy. She has seemingly returned to the square if you disregard everything she said about Louise, my thoughts at the moment are that she has got herself into a terrible gambling debt. I kind of believe that Louise is sort of maybe off on one because otherwise, surely Louise would be going, uh, where's Peggy? Where have you taken Peggy? Why can't, why is she or, not? In, or as Lisa know. just said to her, why don't I give you a break, Louise? I'll take her on holiday or something. That's possibly my, maybe what she's, but then Phil said he couldn't get in touch with Louise. Yeah, so maybe there is something going on with Louise, mm. but I don't know if it's quite as dramatic as Lisa is claiming. As Lisa's saying, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's seemingly, Lisa has returned to 
kind of just drain money out of Keanu. First of all, she turns around to him and says, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, three grand, please. Um, now, bearing in mind that Sharon had just given him money for the wedding deposit. So that quickly yeah. disappears because Keanu hands it straight over to Lisa. Now, again, point number one, as you said, about Keanu and communication. And this is the sign of Keanu, who is who's, he's literally just trying to act bigger than he actually is like there is nothing wrong at this point i think of going to sharon and saying uh okay so lisa's here she want and i want to see peggy but she's she's trying to get money out of me can what do i do here you need to help me but keanu yeah. wasn't doing that because keanu's trying to be the big man and keanu's got so much pride so he uses yeah. sharon's money straight away to kind of fob off lisa and lisa immediately thinks oh marvelous right cool i can get more money out of you oh, more of that please and more of that please where that came from and and then turns around to him and goes, yeah, you can see her more. That'll be 20 grand, please, as well as two grand a month for the foreseeable future for child maintenance. Like, and Keanu's like, oh, 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 all right then. Madness. Like, it doesn't tell Sharon any of this. I just... I mean, I know that he's proud and he's got a, he's got a big issue, hasn't he, with the fact that he doesn't have money. So yeah. obviously you can argue that's why he didn't it's... tell Sharon. Yeah. But the... You know, the way out of it would have been, I'm just not going to give her this money there because she's actually blackmailing me. So I need yeah. to ask Sharon for help on how to not get blackmailed by Lisa, maybe, rather than asking for money from her. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think the in, this has actually become quite an interesting sort of character point for Keanu because I think that being with Sharon has actually sort of given him some sort of psychological issue with, the, with like, I think he is more aware of his own age problems than even Sharon is. Because mm. being with Sharon, I think, has put him under huge pressure in his head to be the provider. He's looking at Sharon, who has yeah. pointed out this week that she has worked hard to get where she is, kind of. You know, bearing in mind that Phil owns half of the gym. <laughs> so, like, you know, and, and, and so it's it's kind of like he's putting additional pressure on himself. And he's it's saying, right, I need to be the breadwinner. I'm the man in this relationship. I need to be capable. And he's putting himself in. I think he's trying to, like, run before he could walk, essentially. Um, and Lisa, which is just, somebody like Sharon, well, yeah. somebody like Sharon should and would find that offensive because what's wrong with the woman being the breadwinner as well? Like, exactly. why have you Sharon... got such a problem with it? It's yeah. 2023, mate. And Sharon's quite proud of like how much money, uh, like yeah. you know, of her achievements over the years. Yeah. Um, so there's all this going on, um, and uh, essentially, once Lisa turns around and says, "Right, uh, yeah, 20 grand, please." Keanu first goes to Peggy's the club and says to Chelsea of all people, uh, have you got any hours for me? And Chelsea's like, why would Phil want you to work for him? Don't be stupid, get out. Um, and then Keanu kind of spots the safe. Now we have a little moment earlier on in the week where Sharon mentions that she's still using Phil's okay. safe code for 1980 the gym. 10. Yes, that's yes, very good. Any significant date there? No, we're going to ask you that actually. I wasn't Were it sure. something to do with football? I'm sure we've had something to do yes, with football before. Yes, yes, yes. Because I was trying to think, like, whose birthday is that? Like, they, they're normally yeah. these things are birthdays. No. So I was trying to kind of spool yeah. through it and think, I don't think it is anybody. It was like, forty-three, you Phil. <laughs> it's not Ben. It's not Ben's birthday, and Ben's the yeah. old, and Ben's the oldest kid. So I couldn't think of what else would yeah. be. But you're absolutely right. I think it is to do with a football thing. It's well done. Isn't it? If you could be more specific, let us know in the comments. But yeah, I think you're dead on there. Well done. Um, but it doesn't work in Peggy's safe. So what she, what he ends up doing is th this is the this is another thing i think keanu genuinely took a book a leaf out of vinnie's book on how to do crime this week because yeah. he he steals uh the 10 grand out of peggy's safe uh to give to lisa now coincidentally chelsea has arranged a little uh tryst with ravi in the office it was convenient, the wasn't it, for exactly keanu. like turn turn the cctv cameras off so that she can have sex in the office instead of just waiting until she finishes work and go home with him she has to be in the office so that the cctv cameras are turned off keanu had, didn't know this like it would have made more I sense i did wonder like, that i did think it, did did i miss him glancing up at it and seeing that he yeah. weren't recording or something but exactly no. or like just turn them off himself you know, yeah. that, it might have been, Matt felt a little bit kind of because um, it was a little bit convoluted the way it, it the way it all happened. I think because Chelsea was basically yeah. relying it basically relied on Keanu like not knowing that Chelsea had, had cut the cameras, and it relied on Chelsea c c cutting the cameras. Otherwise, Phil would know exactly who would nick the money. So, and we assumed that it weren't. She didn't just turn off the camera in the office; she turned them off for the entire venue. Then, 
yeah, because yes, because um, Phil had to then go to Suki and say like, "Have you come oh, see your yeah, cameras from all for these?" Yeah, so presumably, working. all the security cameras in um, Peggy's was, was were off. And notice how Chelsea didn't mention that Keanu were in there before, stood right next to where the safe is. Like, I feel just like she that? might. I feel like she might because okay, might. Phil. Uh, uh, I mean, big thing for Chelsea actually this week because Phil sacks her, and Chelsea's been working there a little while now. Uh, I mean, it's so, kind of fair. I mean, no, perfectly fair. I mean, a fully <laughs> sackable offence, to be fair. And actually, yeah. even when it comes out that Keanu uh, nicked the money, I don't think Chelsea's got a leg to stand on with getting a job back at all, honestly, because she turned yeah, off the cameras. cameras off. For what? She turned yeah. off the cameras so that she could have sex with her boyfriend in his office. <laughs> I know, Ridiculous I thought that was a sackable offence to learn, right? Totally des- she totally deserved to be sacked for that. Yeah. Like, what? In fact, if, I'm surprised Phil didn't say, yeah, and that money's coming out of the last of your wages as well, or something like that. It would have been perfectly mm. within his rights to, I think. Um, so I don't think Chelsea's going to work there anymore, unless maybe Sam comes back and, like, she kind will. of gets... Yeah, well, Zach's I know Sam called, is... Maybe Zach's going to talk him in, talk him round or something. It's going to well, take quite some talking, isn't it? She must be She must be a pretty good manager, ordinarily. If she's got access to the safe that's normally got 10 grand in it, you'd think. Yeah, you'd think. I mean, no. Um, Go on. I was just going to say, I would have thought 10 grand for Phil's. No. no. It's not, to be fair. Like, Phil's got 10 grand and about seven different safes around the but square. Is it because in that's that. I think it's because that was legitimate 10,000. Yeah, that was actual yeah. money. Above, above, that was, yeah, that was money that, he'd, that was money that he'd have to work in the boring way. He was like, oh, I've declared that. that. Yeah. I've paid my taxes on that. Lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Livid. Um, so, yeah. So, Keanu whatever way nicks this money out of the safe and gives it to lisa now phil sort of kind of puts two and two together and comes up with seven because he not can't off, Kat, no he's not he's not far off but he's kind of he lands on the wrong target because mm. cat kind of puts it into his head uh right so lisa's clearly got problems and you've just lost 10 grand out of your safe doesn't take sherlock to work it out really mad moment that phil actually calls the police to deal with this apparently see this I is don't... why you know it's legit money but also, yeah. Phil's calling the police. Actually, I'm not convinced it was him, you know, because we didn't actually see him call the police and Sharon found out about what was going on right at the end of the week. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sharon was the one that called the police. Oh, you're so clever, Rob. <laughs> yeah, but it is that. I wouldn't be surprised because I feel like, I yeah, I know what you mean. It it felt mad that Phil would ever call the police about anything. Mm. So I well, wouldn't be surprised if it was Sharon. Him, why don't you Why don't you resolve it like any normal person would? Yeah, Phil was like, no, why would I do that? So I, I don't know. Mind. It genuinely didn't cross his mind for a second, did it? He <laughs> no. was trying to. He was legitimately trying to work out how we could use his yeah. baseball bat around Peggy. <laughs> like, yeah. how do I not get Peggy involved in me smashing Lisa out with a baseball bat? Um. So yeah, so all of that is going on. Uh, as well as the, um, the the police turn up at Sonia's where Lisa is staying. Um, and all of this is going on in the meantime. Keanu is trying to get Reese, who is his accountant, to sort of move some money around, l- l- kind of semi-legitimately, not legitimately around. Uh, and I loved Reese this week. Reese was spectacularly good fun this week. Um, and I felt really sorry for him as well, because he was kind of like quite touched that Keanu considers him a mate. And Keanu treats him like dirt all week. I felt really sorry for him. Um, but there were some great moments. Yeah, with... Keanu were really like it was really horrible. Yeah, it was him, really it? horrible to him. After they'd had a conversation about how you know he used to get bullied in every part of yeah. the tribe. Yeah, and then Keanu was like, "Get on with it." Uh, yeah, or I shoot you in the face. Well, yeah, no pra- pra- that, but, yeah, pra- but like kind of acting threatening and like acting all yeah. shouty and banging things. Poor Reese. I'm glad that he grasped people up left, right, and center. He does that. They and all Sharon deserved Morton it. Sharon walked in on that as well, didn't she? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Mm. Um. But yeah, some some lovely moments with Reese this week, and with his relationship with Sonia as well. Like even Sonia yeah. has reached the stage now where she's she's basically kind of talking Reese down from these occasional meltdowns, where he's like, "Where have I moved to? This place is insane. Like, why do I live here? I'm currently doing work oh, for yeah. a gangster, and you've moved a, you've moved an attempted murderer into the house for, for yeah. a few days while she kind of chills with her daughter. What have I got myself into here? It's far too much for Reese, bless him. Um, but he's also because Keanu basically implies that you know reese should do the accounts for sharon as well with the mindset that reese can then move some more money around so that he can see peggy so it all gets very complicated um and reese in the end i think just goes do you know what screw all this i'm going to tell everybody the truth so he tells keanu that lisa has arrived with peggy even though he was told to keep that a secret he then goes to sharon and tell, <laughs> tells her exactly what's been going on with everything 
So I don't blame him for that though, because I'm sure that he could legally get into a lot of trouble. Oh, he could. I was trying yeah. to figure it out how he could do it, and I don't see how he could give it to somebody who's not an owner or a business yeah. partner. I don't understand why, yeah. how he could. Which, yeah, I think is because in Keanu's brain, I think that he almost feels like he's got sort of like a hand in the running of the boxing ring when he really, really hasn't. And I think that was the well, that thinking, he was kind of well, we'll, relying on. We'll be married soon and all that. But even that, even if they were married, he wouldn't have that mm. direct access anyway. Yeah, exactly. Business, you know but I mean? think I, I can sort I can sort of see that as just cut of Keanu's naivety in that in yeah, that respect. Yeah. Like yeah, Sharon yeah. is far more aware because Sharon was the one that decided, right, yeah, you're gonna need an accountant. It hadn't even occurred to Keanu. Because you haven't got a clue. Because yeah, you haven't got a clue. Yeah, and he yeah. hasn't got a clue. Because he had to turn around to Reese and go, right, I need some money. Can you get me that money out of my accounts, please? Like he just doesn't have a clue. And this is what I mean. I don't think him and Sharon are well suited at all. I think it was a I think it was a passionate love affair that Sharon had a great time with. And now she's basically trying to overcompensate and find more in this relationship than there's actually there. True, um, when maybe all these constant aging jibes are getting, getting well, to so much as well. Maybe it's going to make a good, you know what, maybe they're all right, actually. I mean, in a lot of, yeah, but then think of it like this. If, you're, if you've met the man of your dreams, oh, well, I mean, what is your view on asking them for a prenup? You know, is that the sign of a relationship that's going to go the mile? I don't no. know. You know, although you... I was thinking, I was thinking this, and then I thought, although in Sharon's position, I kind of understand it because the very few people I know personally have already got a divorce, mm -hmm. right? They all say either don't get married ever again or get always a get a prenup. All say it, yeah. And seeing as her Sharon's been married a few times, a bit no, of Sharon that, knows. I think yeah. it's actually quite reasonable for her to say it, no matter who it is. I agree, Actually. but I just sort of think that... I know I what think, you're saying, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sharon is starting to really kind of reconsider things here and think, what am I getting myself into? Is this a good idea? And how much does she love Keanu or how much does she fancy him? And there's a big difference. And yeah. I know... Like, the thing is, yeah, but lust can feel so powerful as well. Like, I think you can lust mm. over someone and feel like you're in love with them. But mm. I think love and lust are two very different things when you actually lay them out. So, so do you think that she's going to get married to Phil instead on Christmas Day? I don't know. That all depends very much, I think, on how much they really are investing in the whole Pat, Peggy, Frank type recreation. Mm. And I, I've often thought about this in terms of the fact that I look at Phil and Kat and you sort of think, what? Oh, this is madness. But again, scene after scene after scene, I think they really, really work together. It is a mad yeah, relationship. I and I, even if I didn't like them, I think I would be like, yeah, but I'll take it just for the Sharon and Kat kind of relationship because that's really really working and i like it yeah so but in order for the pat and peggy sort of parallels to be continuing that sharon now has to kind of step back in with phil again mm. and we know At that Kat, stage but we also know that cat and phil apparently are getting married on christmas day as well so how does sharon end up getting married on the same day as phil if he if she's marrying keanu Mm. you know there is a lot more to unfold with this it's only just getting yeah. started and i love it um so with lisa again like you were going to say something like lisa being a gambler mad man crazy gambler who's just like her <laughs> life's falling apart she's got no money she's got lots oh, of money yeah, now, this is what i was going to say actually i think yep. it's good that they're doing another gambling storyline last time we had it i think we were cush weren't it when he got really yes bad with yes at one point. Yeah, yeah yeah i would have preferred to have seen it with if they're going to do a gambling storyline, I'd have preferred them to have done it with a character on the, who's already on the who's square. Who's around. Brought her back a bit sooner, yeah. And has watched them, you know, really go through it and in, see yeah, the addiction growing point, and growing yeah. and growing, rather than just throwing Lisa in and being like, well, she needs a reason to be blackmailing Keanu for some reason. So, all right, let's just throw in that she's got a gambling addiction. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I don't think they're going to go into it in into much depth. I don't I know think, how long yeah. Lisa's staying around for. I'm, no, I don't I'm know. Not long, I don't temporary. think. Yeah, I don't so think it's around It's a bit of longer. a wasted opportunity doing a gambling storyline where I think. Yeah, because gambling addiction can absolutely destroy someone's life, can't it? So, yeah, I see yeah, what you yeah. mean there. So that's a perfectly fair mm. point. Um, but talking of gambling, I don't know whether this is something that uh, we need to get, ex we need to sort of take note of or not. But Alfie had an interview at Heartbet, the betting shop that we haven't seen for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. Like mm. the last person I can remember working there was Carol, because uh, I remember that she was working there when she found out that uh, Billy had died. 
So I don't know if that's the maybe the last time Pat yeah. used to work there, but we've not yeah, seen Pat it for ages yeah. and ages. And it's got a flat above it as well. So it's it, there's potential there for a sort of set and like someone to live yeah. above it. And we know now Patrick's obviously back. And I think there's enough characters on the square at the moment for that to be a legitimate set. Like the like you can imagine the likes of Rocky and Mitch and Harvey and yeah, Patrick kind of going yeah, in there going quite often. Lover. Yeah. yeah. So there's potential there, I think. And Alfie working mm. behind there, I think, would work for his character. I quite like that. So that is could Alfie work. Is Alfie going to try and do some dodgy dealings while he's there? Wouldn't put it past him. Her. Wouldn't put it past him. Uh, so there we are then. So that's all of that. Um, much more to come with Ooh. that. Um, yeah, it was huge, that storyline. Normally, I do two pages of notes per storyline, viewers. Let me tell you, this week, I did three on that storyline. For the stat three. fans, three, there were a three lot whole of characters pages. involved in one story. It felt quite, there, yeah, though, it felt there? quite mammoth for what it was. It yeah. felt like there was a lot of characters involved in that. Yeah, um, talking to characters, Ree, that's the end of this week's story discussion. Who have you handed your gold star to this week, please, Ree? Who? Yes. Right, I've been stuck between three people, and now okay. we're here. I'm yes. still not fully decided. Okay, but no, roll, I am. Please. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it to. Bobby, I think. Bobby, all right. Right, and I know that's it might seem, but I really like bumbling Bobby. And I really like how awkward he was, and I love him trying to be a spy. And I've all I also had a little thought this week that some of his awkwardness reminded me of Ian. And I thought I've never really noticed it before with Bobby. That's interesting. You know, when he gets a bit shy and a bit awkward in certain situations, like that's almost like I... he's the one getting picked on. It reminds me of his dad. Yeah. Uh, okay. I feel like Bobby and Ian are I, on opposite sides of the coin when it comes to that because Ian is sort of awkward but unaware that he's being awkward. Whereas Bobby, yeah, I think that's is true. Ne- whereas Bobby, I think is nervous, awkward. So there was a moment, particularly, and I can't remember it now. Obviously, <laughs> but there was a moment this week that made me go, "Oh, that really reminds me of Ian." Actually, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But yes, um, it's Bobby because I love him being so awkward and fumbling. And he's just brilliant. Fair enough. And I really like his his developing relationship with Anna. I know there's complications to come there, but I, uh, him and Anna, I yeah, think yeah, they're, they're very work, sweet. Uh, they work quite nicely together. And I like that yeah. Anna is sort of. Anna quite likes him, I think, as well. I yeah. think it might. I don't know if she's looking at him quite romantically yet, but I think she's she's becoming quite fond of Bobby. I think, which is quite yeah. nice to see. And like I say, obviously, there's complications are coming on that front, but mm-hmm. I think in the long run they might work quite well together. Yeah. Um. I think I'm going to give mine to Reese this week because I really enjoyed Reese. I really enjoyed sort of nervous bumbling, <laughs> mumbling. Another Reece. nervous bumbler. Yeah. yeah. We like. What can we say? We like our nervous bumblers. So to speak. Uh, right. <laughs> so um, there we are then, ladies and gents. So that's this week's story discussion. Uh, let us know any of your thoughts about anything that we have discussed in the comment section or by any of our social media outlets that we will give you at the end of the show. And talking of comments from you guys, it's time to read this week's. Right, we have gone on a plenty this week. So we'll zoom through a couple of comments we've had from you lovely people this week. Uh, talking about tonight's episode, Gillian Maynard in our Facebook group said, such a brilliant episode on so many levels. I love it when they have community scenes with cast members interact that they don't often do. Uh, that Hindu was fantastic. That Balam duet, Kathy and Elaine kissing, members of the six hanging out and so much more. Keanu gets on my nerves, so I'm skipping that, but ha 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 just ends on monotony laughter um i to be fair i yeah the community feel has been great these past like this week especially with you know sort of the different character groups I, again i think which is why this week felt so busy and sort of yeah. a little bit higgledy piggledy at times because there was just such a lot of character so involvement yeah i mean i ain't gonna complain when there's like lots of character groups interacting with each other whatsoever um but um, the hen night is, was great yeah uh, have you got a comment yeah i've got one from jordan lewis who said this was a fantastic and fun episode it was nice to have a more funny episode for a change kathy was hilarious tonight Jack getting some cufflinks was an interesting direction, though. Mm. Great way to end the week and set up the big wedding next week. Yes, yes. I agree with all of that. And yeah. it was an interesting, it was an interesting direction giving Jack the cufflinks, which is yeah. why I don't think it's going to be him. And this is but going further somehow. Unless pass them on. Yeah, but unless we ended up with we end up with some big Jack developments over the coming weeks. I'm trying to think where True. Jack is. we trying to think where Jack is at the minute as a character. So him and Denise are obviously having problems. Mm. Uh, but he's not like he's you know obviously he's quite a, he's being quite sort of alpha male bolshy yeah. sort of not entirely reasonable at the moment but he's not being like villainous he's just being a bit sort of eye-rollingly mm. jack isn't he 
Well, so, he's got the beef with Ravi, and is he still yeah. investigating him? There was the whole investigation I, side to Ravi and stuff, and Jack. Yeah. Before he found out about Denise, I think someone's going to end up stealing those cufflinks for some reason, mm. uh, and that's how whoever is on the floor ends. Worth. Yeah, I can imagine Ravi sort of like. I mean, because Ravi's a total suspect for Christmas Day, isn't he? So yeah. I can imagine him getting into another fight with Jack and those cufflinks sort of ending up with Ravi, and which might be a way for... my dad's cufflinks. Yeah, so... so yeah, 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 exactly. So I can I can see Nish getting them back somehow. Mm. Uh, I mean, Nish is still top of the list, I think. And I don't see at this stage yeah. how it's anyone else, but long yeah. way to go with it, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your comments, ladies and gentlemen. We went on quite a lot this week, so it was quite a short comment section this week. Uh, but if you would like to get in touch with us, uh, then you can do it by doing any of the following. You can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark, on Twitter and Instagram at E20 After Dark. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can listen to us on Apple and all your favourite podcast sites. Email us at E20 After Dark Podcast at gmail.com. And you can also leave us a review on Apple Music, on yes. Amazon, anything you like, like that lovely person did last week who told us that we had awful voices. And thank you. So Deborah much. Was so kind to us about so it. So nice. Thank you. So nice. Thank you for telling us See? our voices are lovely. See? Yeah. See? Our dulcet tones in your ears. It's a mm. lovely, it's lovely sound. You know it. You know Thank it. Thank you. you very much. We have the best listeners <laughs> in the world. We love you lots. Uh, and we shall be back same time next week as we discuss the big old wedding week. I think it's going to be a big one. I get that feeling. Ooh, I think it excited. is. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Bye for me. Later, guys. Ta-ta. Bye.